Hello and welcome uh, once again to Denton's Tales. Now, there are no uh, Vikings or magic swords or wizards or anything like that in this uh, video, despite the uh, paraphernalia over here. But I mean, it looks so good, doesn't it? It, it says something. Anyway, hopefully uh, I have a tale for you that will at least keep you awake until the end. Superstitions. Yes, superstitions. A, a little look at some highly bizarre beliefs, the, the sheer impossibility of which never for a moment stop people believing fervently in them, though how or why anybody ever thought most of them in the first place is a bit hard to understand, since, well, anyone having only one brain cell should have said, well, this is a load of... Well, you know, what you what you uh, might sort of step in if you weren't very careful walking around the farmyard, if you see what I mean. The human race has an amazing ability to dream of utterly impossible things and then believe in them with the absolute certainty of their genuineness. Yes. But, but first, first, gentle listeners, I must give you a warning before you continue watching this video. Oh, yes. It could kill you. Yes, it could kill you. And being dead could quite spoil your enjoyment of it. Yes, they, they, they say laughter is good for you, but you see, laughter can be fatal. And that is a medical fact. Oh, yes, an ancient Greek actually laughed himself to death because extreme laughter can cause necrosis, which is tissue death, in the, the pons and the medulla. Um, located in the brain stem, and that can lead to a very final state of belly upness. So, you have been warned, I accept no responsibility for any fatalities caused by this video. And you watch it entirely at your own risk. You have been warned. Got it? Good. So let us proceed, having got that out of the way. The, dictionary, the, the dictionary definition of superstition, said he, trying to get his mouth working properly, is religious belief or practice considered to be irrational, unfounded, or based on fear or ignorance, excessively credulous belief in and reverence for the supernatural, and a, a widely held but irrational belief in supernatural influences, especially as leading to good or bad luck, or a practice based on on such a belief. So given that, anyone of average intelligence shouldn't really believe a word of it, right? Oh, but they do. Oh, yes, they certainly do, as we shall see. Some ideas, of course, are obvious uh, as to why people might believe in them. A few do make some sense. Well, fear of fire, for example. But others are so completely devoid of even a grain of basic intelligence that one has to wonder how anyone ever came up with the idea and why anyone else believed in it. It shows that despite our getting to the moon and solving incredibly complex equations, making great discoveries and all that, that basically... Human beings can be really dumb. Oh yes, and when I say dumb, I mean dumb taken to incredible length. Some superstitions can even have two completely differing ideas associated with them, such as why a black cat is a harbinger of doom and despair, the very symbol of bad luck on one side of the Atlantic Ocean. Ah, shoot, a gold-dern black cat and it done crossed my path. God darn it, that's today screwed, so help me, Jimmy Johnson. And you kick it, scoring a, a field goal with the cat. But on the other side of the Atlantic, it is a symbol of good luck. You give a picture of a black cat to someone to wish them good fortune. And if one walks past you, well, the reaction is totally different. Oh, I say, a jolly old black cat. How absolutely spiffy, what? I think I'll do the lottery. Today is my lucky day. And you rub it while it entwines itself around your ankles, rubs its wet nose on you, or in the case of a cat I have, drools on you. You know, does, does the Atlantic Ocean have some magic power over black cats? You take one from east to west and it becomes a dreaded bearer of evil omens. Beware the evilness of the black cat. But take it, from, take it from west to east, you know, and it brings happy tidings, joy and gladdery. Oh, tra-la-la-la-la, let joy be unconfined. It's a black cat. Yes, what was that I said about the human race being really dumb? 
Of course, what the color of a cat has to do with luck, good or bad, is rather hard to understand, but since most superstitions do not have a lick of sense in them, I suppose that doesn't really matter very much. Or why, why is a disembodied rabbit's foot seen as the bringer of good luck? No, it didn't do very much for the rabbit, did it? I'm sure if you ask the bunny hopping around on three legs for his opinion on the good fortune-bearing qualities of his foot, he'd tell you to shove it where the sun don't shine. And why just a rabbit's foot? I mean, why not whack the foot off a hamster or a guinea pig, a mouse, or, well, any other small furry animal and go around with that? What's so special about rabbits? To avoid bad luck in Argentina, you touch your left testicle. Now, probably wise to counter real fortune in that manner indoors, otherwise it might not go down well with El Policia Nacional. But should you for some reason be missing that particular bit of your anatomy, well, you could touch a left breast. Yes, just remember to ask permission first if you're using somebody else's breast. Or again, you may come to the notice of the authorities and your attempt to avoid bad luck will fail miserably. There's no good luck apparently on the right-hand side, so it seems also to apply only to men, which I think is very misogynistic, really. Do Argentinian women just have to accept their misfortune, or do they grab their own breast, or perhaps ask a friend for a, a lend of the, well, the required item, if you're very friendly with that friend, of course, but I really have no answer uh, for that. Also in Argentina, it is thought that seventh sons may turn into werewolves unless they are adopted by the president. Yes. Well, well, I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it? I mean, anyone could have, could have thought of that. <laughs> yes. Staying in South America. In Brazil, leaving your wallet on the ground is said to attract money. I would think it's rather more likely to cost you money when somebody grabs it and runs away with it very quickly, but yes. But a, a foolproof way to ensure good luck if you happen to live in Serbia is to get someone to spill water behind you. Yes, it works every time. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. of course it does. <laughs> Obvious, isn't it? Anyway, breaking a glass gets you a year's bad luck. But breaking a mirror, oh, that will result in seven years of bad luck. Why seven, not five or nine or some other number? Well, well, seven, like three, has always been seen as a, a magic number for, for some reason. As to the actual breaking of the mirror, tradition held that mirrors weren't just, you know, providers of the reflections of one's image, but held a part of our souls as well. Mirrors need to be covered up after a death, for example, to prevent the souls of the departed from being trapped in them, and also because it was thought that the dead person could be seen in them. Yes. The Russians believe that breaking mirrors is a gateway for evil entities to enter the world, because by breaking a mirror you may release evil spirits. Mm -hmm. Not to be outdone by the Russians, the Swiss say that whoever is the first to look into a broken mirror is going to die. So if you smash a mirror, be very careful not to look into any of the bits as you sweep them over. Well, well, that's you done for. So don't look! Avert your eyes! Look away or you're doomed! Doomed, I tell you, yes, doomed! You can count on the knowledge of the Swiss. No, oh, yes. Anyone who can make cheese that consists almost entirely of holes with no cheese in them, lovely blocks of, of holes held together with bits of cheese, well, they must know something. Don't ever walk backwards, since that will show Satan your path in life and bring misfortune upon you, at least so they believe in Portugal. Well, now, now there is some truth in that superstition, since walking backwards means you will probably trip over something, regardless of whether or not Satan actually notices your reversed uh, direction. You will certainly notice the ground when you hit it. Magpies. Ah, oh, yes, magpies. In Britain, it's unlucky to see just one magpie. And you must say, Good morning, Mr. Magpie, and how is your lady wife today? To show him respect. And the suggestion that there are two of them, well, that hopefully will bring joy rather than for uh, sorrow, as the, the famous rhyme that would indicate. Mm, yes, but what if it's a female magpie? Uh, magpie? Not, not a lesbian one that might have a wife? I don't know. You know, I... Nor if you can actually tell the difference between them sex-wise. I mean, magpie sexing isn't a topic of burning interest to the general public, I should think. And really, all magpies look exactly the same to me. 
encounter a magpie in Yorkshire. Oh no, up in Yorkshire, and all mag and all, all magpies. This is something you've got to remember. If you encounter any magpie up in Yorkshire, and e bagumlad, thou must make the sign of the cross because these birds be demonic. Oh yes, they be the devil's creatures. They be they be unclean. I tell thee, associated with witchcraft. Yes, so just remember that if you're ever in Yorkshire and you meet magpies. Other things you can do to ward off the evil influence of a magpie is to doff your hat. Well, of course, you happen to be wearing one and spit three times over your shoulder. <coughs> Some, something like that. As you wave your arms up and down and caw to imitate the bird's missing mate. Caw, caw, caw. Assuming, of course, that it has a mate and the mate is actually missing. And how you're supposed to know that, I really don't know. I've, I've no idea, since a magpie with a missing mate will probably look exactly like a magpie whose mate isn't missing. What you do if it doesn't have a mate and they aren't missing and you don't have a hat to doff? Well, I've no idea as to that either. When I was young, every man wore a hat. But these days, you see a man wearing a hat and you win a prize. And what about women? You know, what do they doff? Or, or do, does magpie bad luck only affect men who may have a hat to doff? Mm. And if you follow the prescribed ritual for, you know, protecting yourself, you will probably be arrested as drunk and disorderly as you stand there flapping your arms up and down and cawing away, you know, or, or even committed for psychiatric examination. But, but at least... At least you will have, you will have missed the anger of the magpie and drawn down its evil influence on yourself. So you will have saved yourself from its feathered wrath by your cawing and flapping, and you can comfort yourself as you sit in the padded cell. Uh, yes, meeting the nice people in white coats who will look after you so very, very well. They understand all these things, you see. The rhyme is, uh, of course, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, and seven a secret never to be told. Some versions of it go all the way up to 20. Uh, but not just magpies go by numbers. No, no, crows do also. And seeing five crows, oh, that means sickness will follow. And if you see six... No, and I'm very sorry for you, dear. I mean, settle your affairs, make up your will, and prepare for the end, Ducky, because you're going to snuff it. Belly up, brown bread, in other words, dead. That's your lot. Well, don't, don't blame me, you know, the crows. All oh, the crows know these things. Yes, the crows know. And bear in mind that if a bird calls from the north, it means impending tragedy. If it calls from the south, the harvest will be plentiful which will be very little interest to you, of course, if you're not a farmer and you don't have a harvest. But, but anyway, from the east, and you will find your true love. Mwah! While from the west, um, well, from the west, that indicates good luck is on the way. So be, be prepared. All you need to determine your destiny is a compass. Yes, they're simple, really, isn't it? And, and ravens. Ravens are still kept in Great Britain's famous Tower of London. Their wings clipped, so they actually stay there. Because it's said that should they ever leave the tower, the kingdom will fall. We'll have no fear, royalists everywhere, for baby ravens have been born in the tower, and the kingdom is thus safe. His Britannic Majesty, King Charles III, can rest assured that the nation is secure and protected by the ravens. Yes, your majesty, have no fear, for the ravens hold the tower. Your throne is secure. Not a load of pure, unadulterated horseshit, but well, rather birdshit in that case. If you smell a dandelion, though why you would, I really don't know, since I don't have any perfume to speak of, but anyway, well, if you do, no, oh, you'll be sorry, because you'll wet the bed. No dandelion sniffing, unless you have a mattress cover, and then it's probably all right. You have been warned. You should take care not to drop things in the kitchen unless you're ready to receive guests, because if you drop a knife, you see, a man is going to visit. Drop a fork, and a woman's going to pop in, and drop a spoon, and you'll be entertaining a child. But whatever you do, don't drop the dishcloth, or it's bad luck that's coming your way. Let the knives and forks and spoons clutter to the floor, but keep your grip on the dish tough. Whatever you do, grip it with both hands, for your very life is at stake. Now, for a bit of good luck, 
dig a hole in your garden, fill it with water and put in a few goldfish. And there you go. Lady luck will smile upon you and good fortune will descend all around you. Tra la 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 la. Let joy be unconfined. But don't even think of bringing the goldfish into the house or bad luck is going to make a beeline for your door. Oh, yes. Fish in the garden, very good. Fish in the house, very bad. Yes, your doorway obviously acts on fish as the Atlantic Ocean does on black cats. Did you know that a sailor wearing an earring can't drown? No, no, neither did all those pirates of the Caribbean who wore lots of earrings and drowned pretty frequently when the ship sank. Having a cricket in your home is said to bring good luck. So lots of crickets should make one a certain winner of the national lottery, I suppose, right? Well, my daughter has a skink, and dozens of crickets are put into its tank regularly, so, well, my house is rather full of crickets, but I've never noticed any wonderful good luck coming my way. And the crickets themselves are extremely unlucky since they get eaten by the skink. Well, a robin entering your house is a harbinger of death. Oh, yes, you see a robin. Very, very bad. But a frog. Now, a frog will bring good luck. See a robin, well, contact the undertaker. But see a visiting frog, and you're not going to croak. I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist that one. <laughs> it's bad luck to sleep on the table. At last, at last, a superstition that makes perfect sense, because it may fall off the bloody thing. Why would you want to sleep on a table, of course, seems a little bit hard to understand, though I have known the people doing it. When I worked in the security business, there was one night when I had occasion to call the control room in our headquarters. It would have been in the small hours of the morning I had something or other to report. Now, the phone rang a number of times. Then I heard a rather sleepy and somewhat irritable voice say, What? Hello? <laughs> Followed by some rather obscene expletives. And there was a loud crash, like somebody had just dropped a pile of bricks. Several more muttered expletives, which I will not repeat here. And finally, the controller got on the phone. What the... Expletive removed for the sake of decency. Do you want... He said. Now, I knew he wasn't pleased to have received my call. I'm very perceptive, you know, things like that. I just fell off the... Another expletive removed. Gesk, he said. Apparently, when nothing much was happening, he'd make a little bed for himself on the wide desk where the phone, the base radio, and the computer sat. When I rang, he woke up with a start, grabbed the phone, rolled off the desk, taking the phone with him, and he'd been crawling around on the floor looking for it because he'd also turned off the lights. So, you see, it is not a good idea to sleep on desks or tables, especially when you're being paid to be wide awake and in command of, you know, security operations across an entire city. Well, that's it for part one. Now, in part two, there will be yet more wild, weird, and wonderful examples of utter stupidity firmly believed in by municipal authorities, airline companies, and even an entire country. So, until that time, I shall say goodbye for now, and, well, I hope you see me in the next one. Goodbye for now. <laughs>